Picture this, if you will. A day spent walking the modern streets of ancient cities, retracing the steps of prolific thinkers like Shakespeare and Austin. Or perhaps it's easier to envision a morning spent sailing the Balkans, sun kissing your face as you plunge into crystal clear waters. Still not picturing it? Standing atop the famous Swiss Alps should grant you a clearer picture. No matter what your passions, there's one region that has it all. Experiences that would excite everyone from the foodies to the thrill seekers. Prepare to be spellbound. Welcome to Western Europe. Let's start with the basics. Western Europe is home to many of the classics one thinks of when they're dreaming of Europe. However, the exact list of countries that make up this region is open to interpretation, depending on who you ask. To keep things simple, we'll be covering the countries most commonly referred to as being a part of the Western European family and leaving out our smaller friends like Vatican, Andorra and Monaco. Just who are these lucky nations? Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and finally, the United Kingdom. Each of these proud nations boasts unique and enticing qualities specific to their rich heritages and varying geographies. Western Europe has been responsible for significant historical events, including little blips in history known as the Renaissance, the Age of Discovery, and also the Age of Enlightenment. Populations throughout Europe have grown faster than a knight on horseback. The top five most populous countries in Western Europe are Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Italy, and Spain. Now, you'll certainly want to brush up on your foreign languages if you're to enjoy the region thoroughly. Consider memorizing a few basic phrases in German, French, Italian, Spanish, and even Dutch. Once you've learned to parler en français or hablar espagnol, you can get started on planning your adventure. But where will you go first? Why not explore Iceland, the original land of fire and ice? Not only is it the safest country in the world, it's also home to countless geothermal spas to relax and rejuvenate in. Denmark, on the other hand, is considered the happiest country in the world and is also a great choice for travel, what with their rich Viking heritage and cycling culture. Austria is also worth your attention, especially considering that the capital city, Vienna, has once again been ranked the city with the highest quality of life for the eighth year in a row. Not hard to understand why when your greatest worry is whether you should enjoy an afterwork beer at the Donau Canal or go for a run through Emperor Sisi's summer residence. You know, the tough choices. And now let's take an even closer look to see what exactly will be awaiting you on your journey through Western Europe. For those of us who love the thrill of the great wide open, Western Europe has an impressive selection of adrenaline-pumping adventures to choose from. If you're a fan of breathtaking vistas paired with a healthy dose of exercise, then hike the Alps in summer or get out your skiing gear in winter. You'll want to check out the Salzkammergut in Austria or the Puez Geisler Nature Park in South Tyrol, Italy or visit the French Alps. If you're visiting the Netherlands, race your bikes along the beautiful canals of Amsterdam or enjoy them by boat. Not afraid of chilly temperatures? Then go snowmobiling, fjord trekking or dog sledding on Norway and Finland's snowy hilltops. Norway, in particular, offers expansive views of rich, mesmerizing greenery. Just take a stroll through Sognefjorden to instantly fall in love with our Scandinavian friends. 
Should Lady Luck be on your side, you may even get to catch a glimpse of the magnificent Northern Lights. If rainy weather doesn't deter you, then swing by Ireland and drive the scenic loop, the Ring of Kerry, or tread the Cliffs of Moher. You can learn to surf or perfect your mastery of the waves while exploring Spain's La Concha Beach, a favorite among the surfing community. You should also consider hopping over to Portugal and unwind on Praia do Guincho Beach, made famous by its appearance in a 1960s James Bond film. Or you can head to Algarve and enjoy a more off-the-beaten-track beach with less international men of mystery present by visiting Praia da Rocha. And once you need to let your hair down, you should consider setting sail in Greece. Hop from one island to the next and enjoy life on deck, on foot or on a quad bike. For the cultural enthusiasts out there, Western Europe also has something to offer you. Considering this region is the birthplace of modern Western culture, it isn't the least bit surprising that there are countless cultural icons waiting to be discovered. Art lovers should pay a visit to Amsterdam, if only to stop by the Van Gogh Museum and celebrate one of the most famous post-impressionist painters of our time. A visit to Italy will also be required as you'll want to explore the Roman Empire's impressive heritage, not to mention their jaw-dropping architectural feats like the Roman Colosseum, the Pantheon, La Scala Opera House and of course St. Mark's Cathedral. History buffs will also enjoy time spent in the UK. Britain has the Tower of London, Palace of Westminster, and of course the classic Windsor Castle. In Germany, top sites like Sanssouci Palace or Brandenburg Gate await you. Smaller, less crowded destinations such as Wittenberg or the flawlessly preserved medieval town of Rotenburg ob der Taube are also great options. Wannabe composers should consider a visit to the Vienna Opera House an essential bucket list item. After all, Austria's capital city nurtured the talents of composers like Mozart and Beethoven. Of course, Western Europe is also home to unique and exciting festivals that happen throughout the year. Spain has La Tomatina, San Fermin and Las Falas. Germany hosts the iconic Oktoberfest and the lesser-known Stuttgart Festival. There's King's Day in the Netherlands, St. Patrick's Day in Ireland, and Carnival de Venezia is held in, you guessed it, Venice, Italy. The good news is that there's never a bad time to visit Western Europe. Overall, the climate of Western Europe simply depends on which country you find yourself in. On the southern coast of Spain, you'll enjoy subtropical and even desert-like climates, while Mediterranean countries like Greece can be dry and warm. The farther west you go, the more mild and humid you can expect it to be. Great for those of us who avoid the cold. Iceland, however, is a bit of an anomaly, but that's a story for another time. No matter what kind of weather you enjoy, you'll want to know when peak seasons for tourism start and finish. The low season is considered November to March, where the days are shorter and chillier. During this time, you'll want to pack anything from a hoodie and warm coat to full-on winter wear, including boots and thermal socks. The benefit of visiting during colder months like November and December are that you'll be able to partake in Europe's famously charming Christmas markets. During April to May, as well as September to October, crowds will still be limited, but in the southern countries of Western Europe, you should still plan for hot temperatures and pack light clothing and a swimsuit, though the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean may still be very cold. And finally, we've reached the high season, which happens from June to August. Temperatures are highest and enjoyment is arguably at its highest as well. Pack shorts, t-shirts, layers for the evenings and most definitely your best swimsuit. Expect exceptionally warm temperatures in all countries with the exception of our Scandinavian friends. Average temperatures will be comfortable at around 20 degrees Celsius, but not quite bikini appropriate, we should add. After you've explored Europe's backyard, 
you'll certainly need to unwind. After all, you'll have earned it. Lucky for you, there are fewer places better suited to indulge your taste buds than Western Europe. And what exactly can you expect to find at the breakfast table? Throughout German-speaking Europe, so in countries like Austria, Germany and Switzerland, but also in countries like Denmark and Luxembourg, you'll be sitting down to a platter of bread, cheese, thinly sliced meats, often some smoked ham, jams, yogurts, and even soft-boiled eggs. Pair all of this with a hearty cup of coffee, and there's no better way to start your day abroad. If you have a sweet tooth, then France, Italy or Spain would be an ideal place to wake up next to a variety of croissants, cappuccinos and fruits. Spain in particular is famous for its thick hot chocolate paired with a fried churro for dipping. Need we say more? Once the afternoon rolls around, you'll find yourself with an entirely new selection of items on your European menu. Adjust your belt accordingly. For the carnivores watching, you'll not be disappointed. In Austria, you must try the Wiener Schnitzel, a veal or pork cutlet expertly breaded and tenderly fried. If you're in Belgium, be sure to sit down for a serving of carbonate beef and chicken or fish chowder called water zooey. Of course, you'll need to save room for the famous fluffy Belgian waffles. Moving on to France, you'll be sitting down to famous dishes like bœuf bourguignon, which, simply put, is beef in red wine sauce. In southern France, you'll enjoy a Mediterranean-inspired menu with dishes that heavily rely on garlic, herbs and vegetables. Sampling a serving of ratatouille, essentially mouth-watering vegetable stew, is an absolute must. And in Germany, you'll be presented a selection of food that makes carb lovers, like us, drool with excitement. Feast on Bradfurst sausages, creamy potato salads, crispy schnitzel, rich bread, and of course, Weisswürste with fresh pretzels. If you're passing through the Netherlands, get ready for generous servings of herring, light cheeses like Gouda and Edam, and large portions of soup, French fries, meat and vegetables. If you're a fan of fish, then a visit to Portugal is an absolute must. After all, it's said that the average Portuguese enjoys about 45 kilograms of seafood every year. Cod is the most popular fish, with sardines, salmon and sea bass also up for grabs. Somewhat of a culinary dark horse, Ireland boasts its own unique dishes for the bravest of foodies out there. Start with simple but delicious soda bread, often enjoyed with a spoonful of honey, sugar or dried fruits. Then munch on boiled bacon and cabbage before sitting down to a bowl of traditional Irish stew, served with a side of potato dumplings or pancakes. It's up to you. And just in case you still aren't full, the Hellenic Republic, or Greece for short, will gladly fill you up completely. Sit down to enjoy a generous helping of souvlaki, carefully created by grilling deliciously tender meats and vegetables on a skewer and then presenting it on a plate with fresh pita, fried potatoes and a touch of tzatziki, which for the unfortunately uninitiated is a sauce made from salted strained yogurt, cucumbers, garlic and olive oil. Kali Orexi of course, the Greek islands have plenty more to offer foodies, from its gyros to its moussakas, but we'd be keeping you here all day. Now that we've covered what foods will hit the spot, we need to address a very serious topic. What will you quench your thirst with and where? Before you leave the fabulous Greek islands, be sure to sample a cold instant coffee, similar to a frappe at your local coffee chain, and drink up the ouzo an anise-flavoured aperitif similar to Sambuca. Across the rest of Europe, you can rest assured knowing that copious amounts of delicious wines will follow you wherever you go. Sample authentic champagne and delicious cabernets while in France, before lapping up the sweet, red, fortified port wine Portugal is famous for. Other wine regions that deserve a visit include, of course, Italy's Tuscany, Bergenland in Austria, and Rioja in Spain. Not an amateur wine connoisseur? 
No problem, considering that many Western European countries are also superb brewers. Do yourself a favor and begin in Ireland, where 60% of all alcohol consumed is beer. Of course, you'll need to try perhaps the most famous Irish beer, Guinness. A dry stout with a thick, creamy head before also giving crisp, summery lagers like Harp a go. The United Kingdom, Germany and Belgium also share equal credits when it comes to a long, impressive history of brewing excellence. While in the UK, give the local favourites a try. Grab a pint of Newcastle Brown or Hobgoblin or a bottle of London Pride to enjoy on a sunny day in the park. Next we have Germany, an unsurprising choice when you consider that they're responsible for Oktoberfest, an annual celebration of beer that's so popular it sparked copycat versions around the world. Be sure to put classic pilsners from Bavaria's countless breweries on your list, but don't forget to try a Weissbier or Schwarzbier too. And if you're traveling through Belgium, you're in luck because, you guessed it, their beer is also world-class. Brewed by Trappist monks in southern Belgium, Chime has it all. It's fruity, strong, deep in body, and even a little spicy with a hint of nutmeg and thyme. Once you regain control of your senses, you'll be ready to carry on your adventure throughout Western Europe, a region you can never finish exploring. From the Alps to the Atlantic, and everywhere in between, the great wide landscapes of Western Europe are as diverse as they are unforgettable. We hope these tips and insights make your trip a stellar one. If you still can't get enough, then check out Days to Come for more inspiration and travel tips. If you're ready to go, visit tourradar.com today. Until next time, cheerio and bye for now. Tour Radar, booking tours made easy.